Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another taste test. Today, I'm going to be tasting the world's most expensive coffee, otherwise known as Kopi Luwak. Now, this coffee comes from the Sumatra region of Indonesia, and it has gained a lot of notoriety and popularity because of the way it is processed. So Kopi Luwak is the Indonesian name for this type of coffee. Kopi means coffee and Luwak describes the civet or the Asian palm civet that processes the coffee bean. So Luwak or the Asian palm civet, the animal that processes this coffee, is kind of a small animal and looks kind of like a cross between a lemur, a raccoon, and a cat. It is a nocturnal animal and it is an omnivore, but mostly it is a fruitivore, meaning most of its diet consists of fruit including coffee berries. So the brown bean that we grind up for our morning coffee is actually the seed of the coffee berry. So the coffee berry is red and inside is a seed which is harvested and then roasted to turn a nice beautiful dark brown, gives us all those wonderful nutty, roasted, chocolatey flavors. So the civet eats all these different types of fruits, including the coffee berry, and the fruit passes through its digestive system, ferments a little bit in there, and passes through its bowels, and lands as feces on the ground. Now some person discovered that these seeds, or the coffee beans, when cleaned and roasted, makes a better tasting coffee. It's supposed to be smoother, it's supposed to be less bitter, less acidic, and it is supposedly the most expensive coffee in the world. And thanks to Simon, I'm going to be tasting it today. Thank you so much, Simon, for sending this to me. This was $125, and this is 100 grams. The directions recommend 25 grams per serving, so that works out to be $31.25 for a cup of coffee. Now, that is the most expensive coffee I will have ever tasted in my entire life. I don't even like going to the local Starbucks and buying a cup of coffee. I think it's also important to mention that because this coffee is so expensive and a lot of money is to be made, that there is also a lot of mistreatment. I've read that many civets had been captured from the wild and caged and fed coffee beans exclusively or coffee berries exclusively just to make this coffee. This particular one is made by the Kusu Palm Humbug Cooperative and that the practices are sustainable and they forage the Kopi Loa coffee beans without coming in contact with the animals. Proceeds go towards education and vocational training for the local community, which I think is really great. So before you run out to have Kopi Lawak, I think it's important to know the ethical practices of this as well. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and taste our civet coffee. I'm gonna do a little taste comparison. I'm gonna compare it with my everyday coffee that I have. I like Lavanza whole beans. You can find it at every supermarket. You get a bag of it for, I think, $7. Love that, love it. Nothing fancy, nothing special. I'm just gonna do a little taste comparison. It says to use 25 grams in a French press. And I've prepared 25 grams of my typical beans. I've ground them already, because I grind them in this thing and it just takes forever. So I've already done that in advance. So let's go ahead and open this up. And it smells very nice. It doesn't smell like civet poop at all. And if any of you are worried about sanitation, the beans are washed first and then they're roasted at very, very high temperatures. So there's no worry about any kind of potential pathogens or any kind of sickness that could be transferred from the civet to ourselves by drinking this coffee. So it doesn't smell like civet poop at all. It smells like coffee, but it's a little subtler. It's not as oily. It's not as kind of burnt smelling. It's nice. Here are the beans themselves, and they don't look as oily or as shiny as well as typical coffee beans. And here's my Lavanza coffee that I drink in the morning. It's a little shinier, a little bit darker, and much more pronounced in scent, much stronger. This is what beans look like before they are roasted. It's kind of like green gray color. And then once you roast them, they turn like this. Aren't they beautiful? Okay, 22, 26, 25. Time to grind the beans. Put it into my empty grinder. Oh, come back here, bean. Pick up the beans that I lost, because they're precious. Because I hand grind the beans, I notice that there is a difference between different hardnesses of beans. I never even thought about that before when I just used the automatic grinder. 
but because this takes some effort, and my gosh, these beans are taking forever, I've noticed that there are different kind of variations in hardness. How does this feel? This doesn't feel particularly too hard, but this is gonna take a little while. So let me pause this and come back once I've ground everything up. Oh my word. Did my little workout, everything's all ground. They smell great. A little comparison in color, very similar. So there are a couple of reasons why this coffee is thought to be superior to typical coffee. Number one being the selection. The civets select the best fruit, the sweetest fruit. And number two being the digestive process the bean undergoes while going through the civet. It is exposed to many different enzymes and the bean is denatured a bit and it's supposed to make it taste fruitier and less bitter. We will find out for ourselves. And I'm going to set up my pour over, put the regular beans in there, and as instructed, I'm going to put the Kopi Lawak in a French press, which is another method I like to use as well for making coffee, but typically I use that for when I'm making two cups of coffee. So, don't spill any of that. So my tea kettle broke, so I'm making water the old fashioned way. Just boiling it. Okay. Just enough to bloom it first. Moisten the grounds. I try not to get too fancy when it comes to coffee. You know, you can get fancy with anything, but with coffee, it's just too early. Gonna set this on top to kind of keep in the heat and then I will press it in just a moment. I think this is finished. Now I'm gonna take a little chopstick, give this a stir. Okay. Ooh, that looks lovely. So this is my current favorite mug. It's a little bit small. It's an old school diner mug. It's made by, who's it made by? Oh yeah, Mayor China out of Beaver Falls, PA. Oh my gosh, I love the thickness of this mug. It just reminds me of dinerware. It's just fantastic. It's a little bit small, but I like that because then I avoid drinking too much coffee. But I just love the weight of it. It keeps my coffee hot. And I just love the feeling of drinking out of a very heavy diner mug. It's just great. So I guess it's already a little bit biased if we're comparing these two types of coffee. Uh, if we look at the, so the civic coffee is a little lighter in color and it has almost more of a milkier quality. While the regular coffee looks a little bit more clear, this is a little bit milkier in color. All right, let's try the Kopi Lawak first. It smells great, but not as strong. It doesn't smell so burnt or chocolatey. Let's give that a go. Here we go, cheers. Mmm, mmm. It does taste different. That was my initial question. How different does it taste? It does taste different. While it is coffee-like, there's something very different. It doesn't taste as, it is bitter like coffee. I had read that it is less bitter. It's still bitter. But that really deep chocolatey kind of burnt flavor that I associate with coffee isn't quite as pronounced. It's definitely not as, like roasted and strong in that sense. It doesn't have those kind of charred flavors. It is nice though. So let's compare that with just regular coffee. Oh, I'm so glad I did a comparison. Now, if I compare it with a regular cup of black coffee, very, very different. This is much more acidic, meaning it's sour. 
and it is much more bitter, actually, than the Kopi Luwak. Yes, this is much milder, smoother, less acidic. It still remains coffee-like, but it's much mellower. It's not as harsh than the original. It should also be noted that both of these coffees are being consumed black. I'm sure it'd be completely different if you added sugar or some milk to this, but the original just straight up coffee beans, medium, slightly dark roast is much more aggressive in flavor and in those bitter notes and definitely more acidic. Of course, this is going to vary depending on the type of bean and the style of roast. This is an Arabica coffee. And from my understanding, that's generally what they use in the civet coffee as well, Arabica beans. I'm sorry if I pronounced that room. I'm not sure if it's Arabica, Arabica, at any rate. It's very nice, it's very smooth, very mellow, very easy to drink, particularly if you like drinking coffee black, then this might be an option for you, but at a price tag of $125, or about $31.25 for a cup of coffee, yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with my regular cup of joe. While this is quite nice and very smooth and easy to drink, I don't think I can justify the price tag. Also, the treatment of the animals could be questionable and I would rather not support that if that would be the case. So yeah, looks like it's just regular coffee beans for me. Mm, that's good though. <laughs> Simon, thank you so much for sending this to me and for making this episode possible. Simon also sent me some other treats, including a huge pack of Mentos because he knows that I love Mentos so much. Thank you so much. Now I'll be able to put one in my car, one in my purse, one in every location so I need not go without my favorite breath freshening candy Mentos. He also sent me this. This is the toe of Satan. Have you heard about this? Ugh. Oh. This is a lollipop that's just, you know, screaming really grossly hot. You're supposed to try to keep it in your mouth for five minutes. If you haven't seen my other spicy challenge videos, I'll put the link down below. Mm, this doesn't sound so great, so I've been avoiding that. Included a bunch of Japanese Kit Kats. I haven't done one of these videos in a long time. This is the mint yogurt. This is the hojicha. This is Kyoho grape. So if you wanna see any of those videos, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever had civic coffee before or if you like coffee at all. And if so, how do you like it? Yeah, and please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Take care, take care, bye.